Praise team, you guys are great. Awesome work. Amen. Seriously. Glory. Yeah. Grace and good job, buddy. Holding it down. Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. Welcome to my life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Boy, his presence is so good. He is so good. Thank you, God. You're so good. Lord, you're so beautiful. Lord, we love you tonight. Man, your name is beautiful, God. We pour out, Lord. Man, bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Happy to see Papa. Hey, little Bubba. He's happy to see Daddy. Amen. See, see that? That's how you should be when you come into his presence. Not fearful. Not, not worry-filled, but joy-filled. Exciting about the next encounter you have with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Because the next encounter is the most important one. Because today is a day of salvation. So every day God packs encounter in every single day of your life. And it's important that you look for it. Um, because the Lord will let you miss it. Like, you know what I mean? Like being busy or whatever. You can miss encounter. And busyness and getting pulled in a million different directions. You know, God's still faithful <laughs> he's so good, <laughs> little buddy, amen, hey, that, yeah, that's, Edwin, last, we were, we had like this thing going on, late night prayer, and Edwin started talking about, I heard like when children cry, I said, oh, let me, let me tell you, <laughs> I'm going to weigh in on this one right here, let me tell you about the cry, there's different kind of cries, there's, and I, and Robin knows them better than me, but I'm getting, I'm learning my way around them, because they all wake me up too, and uh, there's a cry that's, uh, I'm just fussy, and I don't need anything. I'm just kind of whining. There's a cry that I'm scared. There's a cry that I'm hurting. The, the whiny cries get ignored. Amen. But what doesn't get ignored is when there's need cry that comes out of need. Been there? Amen? Prayer is not complaining to God or informing the Lord about your situation (laughs) as if he didn't already know. Remember how he entreated the disciples when they're like, Lord, don't you care that we're about to die out here? As if God didn't know what what was rocking your boat. God always knows what's rocking your boat. God always knows. You should say that one. God always knows what's rocking my boat. So it's not like I have to wake Jesus up to tell him what's rocking my boat because he already knows. To have to inform the Lord on what's wearing you out would be to to put his goodness in a lower category. God's so good. He knows everything about you. So he knows what rocks your boat and he cares. Amen? Amen. And, and the thing that I like is when he got up and re- rebuked everything, he said, hey, dude, like, where's your faith? In other words, tonight, whatever's rocking your boat, you have authority over it. Jesus didn't say, oh, because you guys don't have power, you know, I'll take care of this. He got up, rebuked the wind, rebuked the sea, and then he turned to the side and said, hey, man, where's your faith at? In other words, like, you already have the capability of calming the thing down that's rocking your boat. Somebody say Amen. You have the creative power in your tongue and in your faith-filled heart to release a word that changes atmospheres in the name of Jesus. You possess it tonight. Whatever's rocking your boat, don't act as if God's not paying attention to you or that he's somehow not good enough or or like like his goodness is so low that you you have to wake him up. You don't have to wake Jesus up. He knows what's going on. And the key is, is he's given you the authority over all the power of the enemy. Say all the power. Amen. So if, this, if the enemy's having power over you, it's because you're giving it to him. You've given him an open port into the plug, a plug in your life, and he's, he can only steal power. That's the only way he does it. Is he's got to steal power from you because he, he doesn't have power of his own. It's, it's just what he feeds off from the saints. Amen. We're the city of light. We are putting on the armor of light. We are the light of the world. We are the ones with the power. We are the ones with the energy source. 
Amen. But the Satan will use your energy to, to run his windmills and run all his other crap and his lights and his blinky lights and his neon lights. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. So I'm just encouraging you to cut power. If your neighbor was stealing power from you and you looked at your power bill and you're like, hey, man, I, there's no way I use all these gigawatts. <laughs> I think that's off uh, Back to the Future. But anyway, the gigawatts, you know, 14.2 gigawatts, gigawatts, whatever. I, I don't need all that. Like, the, the, somebody else is tapping in. And if you feel such a big strain and pull, it's because the enemy somehow snuck a plug into your power. Come on, somebody. Amen. Because God has given you life, and he's given you life more abundantly, man. And I'm going to tell you that Jesus has endued you with power from on high to change things. Hey, he's endued you with power from on high to change the sky. And you're, what are you talking about? Whatever the sky is over your head, you've got the power to change it in the name of Jesus. He said, hey man, hey, I rebuke the wind, I rebuke the waves, and now where's your faith at? In other words, you guys could have just done that, dude. You could have went, like, you could have, like, it, as soon as you stop being impressed with the storm that's throwing you around, you can begin to speak a word and break it down in Jesus' name. You have the power to speak. God has created you in His image and in His likeness. Hallelujah. And Big Daddy speaks and it happens. That means He put the same power as resident in your life tonight that you can speak on the bow of your boat that's getting rocked right now. Come on, somebody that might be dealing with something somewhere, somehow. If you know what I'm talking about, be like, Amen. Yeah, okay, I need to hear this. I need to hear that I have power over the thing. I've got power over the thing. Say it. I've got power over that thing. Come on. Say, He's given me power over all. He's given me power over all the power of the enemy. Come on, somebody. Cut the line. Cut the line. Cut the line. Hey, you know what, dude? No, you can't plug in here anymore. I'm not going to feed that lie anymore. I'm not going to power that deception anymore. Hallelujah. You're still his favorite. (laughs) You're still his favorite. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're not too far gone. Come on, somebody. That's a lie. That's a lie. You're not too far gone. <laughs> You're not going to lose it all. That's a lie. Come on, somebody. You're not going to get carried away. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. He's not going to turn the switch off in your life and, 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 and shut down his love for you and shut down the destiny that he has built for you because maybe you, you haven't been putting it all together. Thank God he's put it all together. He put it all together right. And thank God that the gifts don't come from me up. It comes from up down. Amen. I need gifts to come from up down. Amen. Because I, sometimes I can't get gifts up. Can I get a witness? I, sometimes I have a, a, sometimes I don't release stuff like I should release it. Bing, bing, boom, boom. That's the Holy Ghost sonar waiting for a ping back. Bing, boing. Okay, I got one. Amen. I was waiting for it. Hallelujah. You say, Pastor, you don't have to bend your ears. They're already out there. I know. Hallelujah. It's like a car door coming down the road with the doors open. Like a car going down the road. Whatever. Amen. So I just prophesy this to you guys tonight. Speak on the bow of whatever's, whatever's rocking your boat. Get on the bow and speak to that thing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay? Because he is not asleep. Amen. And he's given you power over all the power of the enemy. And you say, well, that may be silly. No, it ain't silly. Get to the bow of that boat and you say, you know what? You stupid, stupid wave that I've been freaking out about for six months, nine months. Six years, three years, 20 years, whatever it is, I tell you, I'm rebuking you right now. I'm tired of you beating me up against the side of the head and rocking my boat. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. Don't don't run from the, the storm. God put you in that thing. But he didn't put you in the storm without a paddle. He gave you something better than a paddle. He gave you the word of faith. <laughs> See, Josh, the word of faith narrows the gap. And it don't matter how big the gap is, the word of faith narrows it. Amen. The word of faith is what? Close to you. Say it's close to me. Say the word that can change everything is close to me. It's in this room tonight. I'll take it even further. He says it's close to you where? Even in your mouth. The word of faith that we preach is nigh thee. I'm going King James on you. Nigh thee. Say nigh thee. Say it's nigh. It's nigh time. Can I get nigh time in here? 
It ain't Miller time. It's nigh time. It's nigh time. And nigh time equals my time. It's my time to release a word that changes everything. It changes the atmosphere around me. It changes the stars. It changes the waves. It changes the wind. It changes the system. Come on, somebody. The system that was hatched to freak me out. The system that was hatched to make me run and be freaking out. God's given me a word against that, and he gave it to me in my mother's womb. (laughs) Hey, the word's already in you, and it was in you when he formed you in the womb, baby. All you got to do is let that word flow and change it. Change the situation. Come on, somebody in this house. Hey, if if, if, if if a female is born with her reproductive system already in alignment, Already there. Seeds already there. Seeds already there. And she grows into it. There's seed that God's put in you. There's words of faith that God's put in you. And it ain't for three people in this room. It's for every single person that draws breath. It's not for some guy that's, you know, maybe a missionary somewhere. Bless that dude because he's probably blasting it, man. I want to I want to encourage you. Step to the bow and declare something in the name of Jesus and change something. Why are these waves always picking on me? Why is everybody always picking on me? Why is everybody always picking on me? I've never read that. I've never seen that as a spiritual characteristic of a powerful person. Why is everybody always picking on me? This ain't going right, and that ain't going right, and this ain't going in. My dog died. I don't want my dog to die. No. Maybe one of them. No, that's not true. No, love the dogs. Bless the dogs. Thank God for the dogs. But sometimes you've got to realize God's created you to create. What did God do in Genesis chapter 1? He created environments. He spoke atmosphere. He spoke atmosphere. Hey, he spoke atmosphere. So what does that look like? I'm going to say it. If you want to get married, start speaking, you're going to get married. Well, I ain't got no prospects, Pastor, and you don't even stop right there. I don't want to know. I don't need to know. I don't want to know. Don't need to know. Can I get a witness? Start speaking. Quit going, I don't want to know. They're all happy. (laughs) That's not word of faith. That ain't it. That ain't, you're going to get nowhere there. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. I, I, was, I bought a vehicle this week. Amen. After a year of searching, I found exactly what I wanted. And I got it, the price that I wanted. And I got extra things in it that I didn't know I had. And they added it. And it was great. And I'm happy. Very, very happy. I'm in my dream machine. Amen. And, and, and uh, I, I loaded a bunch of people up in the dream machine. I said, you're in the dream right now. You're riding in my dream right now. Can I get a witness? Amen. And uh, don't worry, I didn't say that's my whole dream. I promise you that. It's not all substance things, but I'm telling you, I'm very thankful to God. I'm glad it worked out. I'm glad everything poured together for me. But I ended up buying this vehicle in Gainesville. And it was a weird place because, you know, if you look at a certain car lot, like if you looked at the place, you wouldn't go there. You wouldn't go, oh, I'm going to buy a vehicle there. But, you know, on the Internet, it shows everybody, you know, on the Internet machine, everything looks legit, doesn't it? You know what I mean? Like, oh, a good website. It's got to be great, right? So I called this guy. He's a good dude. And we start talking. And we get back and forth. And then I said, dude, listen, man, I ain't playing games. He goes, I ain't playing games. I'm like, I'm really not playing games. This is what I want. This is what I want to do. Got the deal worked out. I drive to Gainesville on Friday. Robin's with me. Grayson's with me. We take stuff, care of stuff at the bank. 
We go meet this dude. He's a good dude. He's a believer. I pray. I pray. I, I lay hands on the dude. And, like, there's glory that gets transmitted to him. Like, absolutely gets blessed by the Father. It's wonderful. His wife ends up coming up to the dealership. And she gets out of the car, and the Lord says, she is about to have a baby. She has been barren, but she's about to have a baby. That's what I'm going to do. Comes back out, and I'm like, hey, uh, I don't, you don't know me. What's your name? She's like, Sabrina. I'm like, all right, Sabrina. Uh, you want to have children, don't you? I said, you want to have children, but you haven't been able to have children. I'm going to tell you something about to have a kid. And I had, I had, I won't call her big mama, but I had Robin with me. Not big mama, but you know, because she's a bit, she's got a lot of kids. Anyway, so uh, she's there, right? Mom's got, sit, mom's sitting there and her shirt's all, and she, and I said, mama, I, I mean, I said, listen, we, seven years we weren't having any babies. And let me tell you, we really catching up for a lost time. We're cranking them out left and right. So there's a, an abundance on us. There's a fruit of the womb. Fruit of the womb. Fruit of the womb. <laughs> both. Fruit of the loom is going on. Fruit of the womb is going on. And I'm like, so she, she's got double fruit, fruitness, double fruitness on her. And she's going to lay hands on you. And she, you're going you're gonna to receive. And she's like, at this point, it looked like somebody turned the waterworks on. You know, okay. You know, it's just like, you know, and her husband comes over and there, she's just crying. And we're, I was like, you know, hold her hand and pray and bless and pray and bless. And we spoke the word of faith and it changed things. And she goes, she goes, did you tell them? He's like, no, I didn't tell me anything. Uh, I said, this is happening. It's happening. And then I said, now speak like you're about to have a baby. Chat it up. Declare. What's the thing that's badgering you to death? Bludgeoning you. Start speaking atmosphere to it. Hit Genesis 1-1. Start a new beginning and begin to declare stuff as of now. Let me tell you something. This is what's going to go down. Wave. You filthy wave. This is what's going to happen. You filthy wave that keeps showing up. You keep showing up in my life. You keep showing up in my finance. You keep showing up in my marriage. You filthy wave, I rebuke you. I shut you down with the same authority that Jesus shut you down with that he said I have and pastor preached that. So I can say it right now in Jesus' name on the edge of my boat. You ain't going to rock my boat no more. I'm shutting you down. Amen. You know that a wave is just energy? That's all it is. It's energy that gets transferred. Whatever you want to call it, but anybody got their boat rocked lately? Right? So I'm not preaching to stop sign or I know it's time to stop, but almost. All right. And tell you what, I'm gonna tell you what the Lord told me this morning when I got up. Okay. Dave? Hit the verse, first verse. Dave, Dave of the universe. All right, Luke 6, 6. Now it happened on another Sabbath also that he, being Jesus, entered the synagogue and taught. And a man was there. Right hand was withered. Next verse. So the scribes and Pharisees watched him closely, whether he would heal on the Sabbath and they might find an accusation against him. Next. But he knew their thoughts and said to a man who had withered hand, Arise and stand here. And he arose and stood. Jesus said to him, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or do to evil, to save life or destroy? And he had looked around at all of them, in another verse said, in their eyes, he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he did so. And his hand was restored as whole as the other. Say, no, back up. That's good. Say, stretch out your hand. And his hand was restored as whole as the other one. 
I talked to you about having two sides in, this, in your life, right? The side that you're kind of like, yeah, I want to present this side. And then there's the side that you don't want to present. Can I get a witness? The, it's, there's the side you want to present, and there's the side that you resent. Can I get a witness in here? You resent it. You hate it. You're angry about it. You just wish it wasn't there. You wish you weren't that way. Can I get a witness in here? Come on. And so there's the side you want to present and the side that you consistently resent. Amen. The Lord asked me a question this morning, and he said, will you stretch forth your hand? Not the good hand. The withered one. Will you stretch forth your hand? See, the right hand is what's supposed to be right. Hit Isaiah. The right hand is what's supposed to be powerful. Amen. And when the scripture would talk about um, grabbing a right hand or, or reaching out with a right hand, it always had to do with strength. Say strength. strength. Amen. Look at this, Isaiah 41.9. Uh, you whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest regions and said to you, you are my servant, I have chosen you and have not cast you away. I want you to just say this with me. Say, I am his servant. I have been chosen. And he has not cast me away. One more time, I am, uh, oh, where are we at? Oh, yeah, I am a servant, I have been chosen, and, he, and I have not been cast away. All right, next verse. I should probably preach a sermon sometime about cast away. We'll do it another time. Fear not. Say, I ain't going to pray. I ain't going to be fearful. Say, hey, fear not. Turn your name and say, fear not. Uh, for he is with me. Come on. Hey, be not dismayed. Come on, in the name of Jesus, I'm up on this thing. Like a corn, like corn cob, like spice on it, like from chilies. I'm all up on it right now. I'd I'd crush some corn from chilies right now. You know what I'm talking about. It's great. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. Oh, my God. Say, I ain't going to be dismayed because because he's my God. He's going to strengthen me. Yes, he's going to help me. He's going to uphold me with His righteous right hand. Amen. Say right on, Lord. (laughs) So you've got to bring your wrong to His right. Can I get a witness? Hey, come on now. (laughs) Bring your wrong to His right. Hey, Lord, right on. Can I get a... Come on, somebody. But don't give them the good hand. Give them the other one. Give them the hand that ain't so good. Can I get a witness in here? Come on, give them the withered hand. Put that in the right hand. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Next verse. Amen. Behold, all those who are incensed against you shall be ashamed and disgraced. Can I get a witness? They shall be as nothing. Amen. And those who strive with you shall perish. Can I get a witness in this house? Whatever you've been striving with is going to perish in Jesus' name. I prophesy it tonight. I speak it. I declare it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Next verse. You shall seek them and not find them. Sometimes it seems like your enemies get presented on every side. Every way you look, they're there. Ba-bam, ba-bam, ba-bam. He says, I'm going to do something. And when I do it, with my right hand gets in the mix, when I give them a good right hand, can I get a witness? Hey, say, Lord, give them a right hook. Come on now. Say, Lord, give them a right hook. Say, Lord, show them what you got. God, give them a good right hook. Come on. Come on. Lord, just give them a good one. <laughs> Glory to God. Those who war against you shall be as nothing. As a non... Oh, boy. I wish I had a highlighter. I want you to read it with me. Say, okay. Say, whatever's been... Whatever I've been fighting with. Come on. Whatever I've been fighting with. I'm not going to be able to find it. The people are the things that have been contending with me. Situations and circumstances that have been contending with me. Health things in my body that have been contending with me. Can I get a witness? Relationship stuff that's been contending. Can I get a witness in here? Those who war against me shall be as nothing. Say it's gone. As a non-existent thing. I'm going to prophesy this right now. What, whatever that thing, if you just hear me and believe this word of faith right now, I'm telling you, you receive it, you'll, you'll see this in your life. 
that the biggest monolith, the mighty, mighty monolith in your life right now that's just like, oh, the strong tower I'm trying to break down, trying to get from under the shadow of this thing, trying to break the grip of this thing, trying to get out of this that I've been dealing with, the shadow of this thing, it's going to become a non-existent thing in your life. Can you say amen? amen? Will you invite this in right now? Just say amen to it. Say, yes, God, be it to me. Hey, do, do like Mary did. Say, Lord, be it unto me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to bear a Jesus. Okay, Lord, be it unto me. Come on. What's the thing that's the biggest beast of burden? The biggest battle. The biggest battleground. Non-existent thing. Because when his right hand gets in the mix, it's done. It's done. Next verse. Oh, nice. I like that. Hey, way to go. What? That's very good. I don't need a highlighter. I got a Dave. That's very good. Say, say uh, Jamie, say non-existent thing. Come on. It's all right. You can say it too. Kelly, say it's a non-issue. Dan, say it's a non-existent thing. It's not a thing. That's cool. You can say it your own way. Stephanie. However you say it, what would you say? Elena, what would you say? Come on. Ooh. Ooh. Like it never. Like it never. Huh? Come on. The enemy wants you to think that that withered will never end up in his hand. But it's amazing that Jesus didn't say anything. He went right for the withered place. He went right for the withered thing. And he said, stretch forth. Next verse. And we're going to wrap it up. Um, you can put uh, Here I Am uh, On by Paul Ann Leitner. Josh, you'll find that. For I, the Lord your God, say, say my God. Like, how do you know it's going to be a non-existent thing? How do you know it's going to be nothing? How do you know it's going to be nothing but a chicken wing on a string? How do you know that it's going to be no big deal? How do you know? For the Lord God is going to hold my right hand. That's what's going to happen, sis. That's what's going to happen. Like, I'm telling you. Hey, hey it's like this. Hey, right this way, my dear. Come on, tell please, right this way, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am, this way, please, ma'am. See, okay. All right, now here's all the existent things right now. Here's all the existent things. Right this way, ma'am. Check it out, right this way. Hey, right this way. Yes, ma'am, please, yes, 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 please. Say, <laughs> Okay, right this way, yes. See, right up here. Yes, ma'am, thank you. Okay, great. So, now all you had to do was just follow that hand. Stay there, you're past it now. You're past it. Hey, sir, follow me. Okay, now, here's the stuff. Actually, we're going to go right through it together. Me and you, bro. Me and you, bro. Hey, right hand, right hand, come on. Say, I'm a right hand man. Oh, it's okay. Just, uh, we'll go with it for this one figuratively. It's a hand of power. All right, dude, listen, we're going to go through there again. Hey, we're going we're gonna to blast through this thing. Actually, we're going to walk up here. Come on, me and you, buddy. Hey, we're po- hey, say I'm walking over the thing that was walking on me. Hey, come on, we're going to do this one more time. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to be like this. Bam, bam. Hey, I'm walking over the thing that was walking over me. I know I'm seven foot two high. Yeah, okay. All right, way to go. You're killing it, dude. So we're, we're making it through in the name of Jesus. Say non-existent. That's where you belong. That's where you belong. Please, follow me, ma'am. Right this way, ma'am. All right, ma'am, follow me. I'm doing the left hand. Oh, we're going to go right hand here. Your right hand. Bam. All right, let's go. We've got to get through some things. But all you've got to do is just like, just know, hey, my God's got me. My God's walking me through. Hey, God's walking me through. Hey, God's bringing me through. You can walk over if you want, whatever you can do. Hey, um, so, oh, nice. Very nice. Very nice. So, so we're getting past whatever we've been dealing with. Hey, we're coming through. I want to prophesy. There's breakthrough over this house right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Right now in Jesus' name. Whatever the withered place has been... <clears throat> Stretch it forth. Hey, whatever, the, whatever your withered place has been, dude, stretch it forth to God. I promise you tonight, if you would stretch forth your hand tonight, I will promise you there is a hand that's going to reach down. It's going to grab your hand, man. And I know we like to present the good stuff to God, but sometimes, man, dude, you just got to put out the withered hand. 
Tonight God's saying, will you give me your withered hand? Come on. Will you do it? Can you do it? Stand up. Let's do it. Husband, wife. Son, daughter. Come on. Hey, let's go ahead and give God right now. Do you trust Him enough with the withered hand?